Hello there, I'm Swapnil Bharatiya and I'm sure you are wondering what's going on with this channel. It used to be called Muktwear and suddenly it's called Swapnil Bharatiya. So I'm going to talk about it today. I'm Swapnil Bharatiya and I have been covering open source Linux for almost uh, 12 years now. I started off my career way back in 2005 when I joined Electronics for You magazine group after finishing my uh, filmmaking and journalism course. The fact is I have been a writer from a very early on. I, I used to read a lot of, I, I just love to read and I love to read a lot of science fiction and I remember that when I was around 13 years old I wrote my first uh, science fiction which was actually a fan fiction about an Indian superhero called Faladi Singh. I don't know if uh, even most Indian friends know about him anymore which in English would mean steel man. I was also heavily into electronics and mechanics. I had set up a small lab in one of uh, my rooms where I would do all these electronics experiments and my, my parents wouldn't be very happy with that because they would they were worried that I may hurt myself with soldiering iron and all those things. Um, I would I, I would thank my brother because he bought a electronics kit for me which had a breadboard and all those registers and ch chips and stuff where you can build your own electronic gadgets. Uh, I remember that when I was around 18 years old, we had to do a project in the school and I obviously was planning to make some electronic gadget. I, I picked a circuit diagram for a gadget from Electronic for You magazine, but there was something wrong with the circuit diagram and it did not work. So I looked at it and I improvised it and I made it to work. So it was a totally different, the, the concept of the device was same, but it was a totally different circuit diagram using different kind of chip. So I sent that, I wrote an article about it and I sent that story to um, NISCIR, which is National Institute of Science, Communication and Information Resources, which was run by Indian government because in India, most of the things were back in those days, you know, government owned. So they had a magazine called Vigyan Prakati in Hindi. So I sent that article to that magazine and it got published. So I got my first story published when I was 18 years old. So that was a good achievement for me. And after that, once I, I got into that, I started writing science fiction and I have been, you know, getting published ever since. I also started, you know, kind of broadcasting my stories on All India Radio, where I would go to the studio in Lucknow and I will record the story in my own voice and it will be broadcast. At the same time, I was also toying with electronic devices. I would make small gadgets and sell it to other, you know, kids or students. So from from the very early on, I created this, you know, I, I never asked pocket money from my parents. I was making money on my own with all this writing and uh, these electronic gadgets and stuff like that. When I finished my post-graduation, my parents wanted me to go and do some courses or, you know, find a job with, uh, the, the belt I come from is very much into government jobs and that to like district magistrate. I don't know what is the equivalent here in the US, but, but something similar to that, you know, administrative kind of jobs, high ranking, you know, government jobs, I was not interested in at all. So I kind of lied to them. I went to New Delhi. I met a very famous uh, writer called Asghar Wajahat and I started working with him as his assistant. And that's a long story. I don't want to get into that. But uh, then I did my filmmaking and journalism course. And once I finished the course, there was a, you know, there were, of course, I was, I should have moved to Mumbai to pursue filmmaking, but I needed kind of money and a job. So I started looking for something in print. I mean, I was looking for whatever job was available back then. So I found this job in Electronic For You magazine group. Uh, they were looking to start a new product called EFI Times and they were looking, you know, somebody to start it and head it. So I joined the, 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 so I joined them as a assistant editor and then there was a team of eight journalists under me and we were like, we kick started this project and it grew. The same year they organized the Linux Asia, which was one of the biggest open source and Linux event of Asia back then. And that changed my whole life because I got to meet and interview almost everyone from the Linux and open source world. I still remember walking with Mark Shuttleworth, uh, talking about Ubuntu and his vision and everything. I met Brian Bellendorf and interviewed him, Klaus Knopper, who later became a very close friend. 
I met Jim Zemlin uh, before uh, even Linux Foundation was formed. I think I met everybody except for two people, and that those were the two poles, opposite poles of the Linux and open source world, RMS, Richard M. Stallman, and Linux Store Wells. But next year, when uh, Microsoft accused Linux of uh, p patent infringement, when Novell and Microsoft uh, signed a deal, I approved Linux Store Wells. And uh, I was the first journalist in that magazine group to get Linux Store Wells interview for them. So that was a big achievement for me back then. And then two years later, I uh, met Richard M. Stallman. He was he was in India and I ended up spending three days with him where I it walked around. I was kind of his as local escort where I'll, you know, pick him up in the morning and I'll just, you know, walk around with him to all the events or people he will go to meet, government officials and everything. And that's how I understood more most about him that most people don't understand. And we had a long discussion and, you know, I wrote a story about it. So I got those two covered as well. But these meetings, these these meeting all these people, writing these stories, uh, changed my whole approach towards um, towards technology and science and knowledge and information because as I said I came from science background where uh, not only I was a bachelor's in uh, science I was also a science fiction writer and to us uh, science people patents and copyrights and all these things are very important they're like kind of sacred but suddenly you're talking to these people who are giving everything away um, in some cases for free or they're creating a business model around it so that changed my whole approach and then I started writing for Linux for You magazine, which was um, their premium magazine group. And I I just got totally involved with Linux and open source back then. I was still a Windows user, but one of my friends who was also a correspondent with Linux for You magazine, he converted me to Linux. Uh, we would go out and talk about it. I'll bash Linux because we were using Fedora Core in our office and I hated it because unlike Windows, you can't do a lot of things there. It was also LTSP server. So it was, you know, remote servers, not, you know, you're running a lot of things locally. But uh, gradually, the more I learned about Linux, I, I came to love it and I started liking it. So I, I became a Linux user and I also became a Linux advocate where I would go to people's house and uh, remove Windows and install Linux on their system. And I converted a lot of people uh, to Linux back then. Then in around 2009, I got married and then I moved to Germany. And of course, you can understand we lived in a small town of Germany and uh, English was not the language there which you can get by with and it was even harder to, um, to find an English speaking writing job. So I did not want to kind of change career so I continued writing I started my own site that was Muktware so that I not only continue to write about Linux and open source I keep myself updated as well because I was totally passionate about it. I did it for a couple of years and then in 2013 we moved to US and then you know that's when you know I was back in a country you know where you can speak English so I started writing for Linux Foundation I started writing for uh, uh, IDG group where I like wrote for I uh, for IT word then I wrote for CIO and then I write for wrote for uh, InfoWord I started writing for uh, the new stack and then I also write a blog for Cloud Foundry I write for Linux Pro Magazine I write for admin magazine i write for raspberry pi geek magazine i also write a blog for own next cloud and i'm also so i'm quite spread out um, i write for a couple of publications now what happened because of all this work paid work i did not get much time to write about to write on muktwear I, I did not i was because of all this paid work i didn't have much time for Muktwer. So it was not getting updated. So I kind of uh, tried to change the focus of the site, but still um, I was not getting enough time to continue the site. So I eventually decided to shut it down. But at the same time, I also realized that while I was writing for all these publications, um, they had different focus. I was passionate about Linux and open source and technology in general. So I was not getting, you know, the kind of open platform where I can you know just express the, the kind of things that I'm interested in so a few few weeks ago I started 
two new websites and these are going to be permanent don't worry about it but there will be a business model behind it and that won't be advertisements one is uh, consume it and second one is enterprise it so while enterprise it will focus more on enterprise centric story consume it will focus on consumer technology because i as i said from the beginning i'm i'm at kind of i'm somebody who is heavily into science and technology i'm more excited about where we are heading and not where we are or where we were i'm I, if you look behind i have all the vr get i mean i have sony vr i have samsung gear vr i have day dream vr i have i mean you name it and i i have it it's it's not that i like to have gadgets it's because i like new technologies i want to see where humans humanity is heading in future only device that i don't have is um, htc wipe and Oculus Rift, the reason being that it's, uh, <clears throat> it runs on Windows. And uh, while I have nothing against any platform, I use Linux as my primary desktop, then I use Mac OS, and I also run Windows sometimes. But uh, with Windows 10, the privacy issues, I'm not very comfortable with that. At the same time, I, I, I'm a hardcore Unix user. I need my terminal, I need all access to all the core through the terminal, and I am way too dependent on that. And Windows just doesn't fit in, into my workflow. So I'm much happier with Mac OS and Linux because they're both, you know, Unix and Unix-like. <clears throat> However, my point is that, one, I am totally unbiased because I use all possible platforms there, whether it's Android, whether it's um, um, iOS, whether it's Windows, whether it's PlayStation, whether it's Xbox, whether it's Nintendo Switch, whether it's uh, NVIDIA Shield, Apple TV. I, I not only access everything, I use everything so that I am well informed and educated about those platforms before I share my opinion about them. Anyway, the point is that I want a platform where I can talk about my own exposure to technology, where I can talk about where I see it is heading. The reason is uh, I meet with a lot of people from the tech world. I interview a lot of people I, I do a lot of research uh, for my stories. So I, I want to share those insights that I get with the world to see where we are heading or to see where we stand. And that's what I'll be doing on this channel from now onwards. So I'll be talking about mostly technology. I may touch upon other areas. There may be a bit about politics, something about entertainment once in a while, but uh, Technology will be the common theme there. Unless it is really pressing issue, I will not be going beyond technology. Second thing is that open source will be a dominating factor of this platform. There are two reasons. One is that I love open source. I use like 90% of my tech usage is open source. Second is that open source dominates our world today. No matter where you look at, it's open source. Even my Nintendo Switch and PlayStation 4, they are now on, on open source technology. It's, it's not Linux, it's BSD, but it's open source. So most of the focus will be on technology and open source. Now, what kind of stories I'll do? Sorry, not stories. I'm, I'm a writer, so I still think about stories. What kind of talks there will be? Uh, it will be either about the new product that I bought or used or a new technology which was announced and I, I have some insights to share about it. It could be about a new trend. It could be about a new operating system like PopOS that I wrote about or once again did a video about or it could be about the new uh, Panasonic GH5 camera that I bought. I sold my Nikon D750 and I bought this Panasonic GH5 camera and this very expensive 42.5 uh, millimeter lens because I wanted to shoot these videos in 4K and I wanted there to be no limit in the, because usually, you know, there is a 30 minutes limit on the videos. I didn't want that. And I wanted a flip screen so I can see myself while I'm recording the videos. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of getting distracted from the main topic, but the point is that I'll be talking about latest gadgets, technologies, trends, and where the market or community is moving. I may also invite some people for interviews from some high profile people or celebrities from the Linux and open source world to talk about them. 
but there are like these five or six core topics that I'll talk about here. One will of course be Linux and open source, obviously. Second will be mixed reality and VR, because that's where I think is the future of computing. Third will be IoT, Internet of Things. There's a lot of misunderstanding, there's a lot of FUD against uh, IoT devices, that they are insecure and uh, all those things. I have written a very detailed story. I have shared a link below, you can check out. But I actually talked to more than 15 companies who are active in Linux, uh, sorry, who are active in the IoT world to actually understand what's going on there. So uh, that's one more topic I'll talk about. I will talk about cloud, as usual, containers. And I will also talk about consumer products in general, but these are not the product, you know, like the new iPad or something. I will talk about it only when I think it has the potential to change our lives or the market. So that's the kind of things I'll be talking about. Now, where I need your help is to help me improve. That's how open source work. You know, I need your feedback. My, my mistakes on this channel, um, are not proprietary you are you're you know you're open to submit patches you're you're open to i'm open to suggestion you're just free to to give whatever feedback you want how i can improve further and also what kind of topics i should talk about and as we move forward we will pick and choose okay these are the certain areas that i should focus on and these are the certain areas i should not talk about so we'll see how it goes but this is something i wanted to talk about because uh, from now onwards, you'll be seeing me on this channel regularly. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.